Deuteronomy 9. Why the Lord will help Israel? Moses said, Israel, listen to me. You will soon cross the Jordan River and go into the land to force out the nations that live there. They are more powerful than you are, and the walls around their cities reach it to the sky. Some of these nations are descendants of the Anakim. You know how tall and strong they are, and you've heard that no one can defeat them in battle. But the Lord your God has promised to go ahead of you like a raging fire burning everything in its path. So, when you attack your enemies, it will be easy for you to destroy them and take their land. After the Lord have you wipe out these nations and conquer their land, don't think he, he did it because you are such a good people. You aren't good. You are the stubborn. No, the Lord is going to help you because nations that live there are evil and because he wants to keep the promise he made you made to your ancestor Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. When Israel made an idol, Moses said to Israel, don't ever forget how you kept to rebelling and making the Lord angry the whole time you were in the desert. You rebelled from the day you left Egypt until the day you arrived here. In Mount Sinai, you made the Lord so angry that he was going to destroy you. It happened during those 40 days and nights that I was on the mountain. Without anything to eat or drink, he had told me to come up there so he could give me an agreement he made with us. And this agreement was actually the same Ten Commandments he had announced to you when he spoke from the fire on the mountain. The Lord had written them on two flat stones with his own hand. But after giving me the two stones, he said, Mose, hurry down the mountain to those people you read out of Egypt. They have already disobeyed me and committed the terrible sin of making an idol. I've been, I've been watching the Israelites. It's very tight, and I've seen how stubborn and rebellious they are. So don't try to stop me. I'm going to wipe them out, and no one on earth will remember they ever lived. Then I will let your descendants become an even bigger and more powerful nation than Israel. Moses said, Fire was raging on the mountain top as I went back down, carrying the two stones with the commandment on them. I saw how quickly you had sinned and disobeyed the Lord your God. There you are, worshipping the metal idol you had made in the shape of a calf. So I drew down the two stones and smashed them before your very eyes. I bowed down at the place of worship and prayed to the Lord. Without eating or drinking for forty days and nights, you had committed a terrible sin by making that idol. And I, Lord, hated what you had done. It was angry enough to destroy all of you and Aaron as well. So I prayed for you and Aaron as I had done before, and this time the Lord answered my prayers. 
there is a scene for you to make that idol. So I threw it into the fire to melt it down. Then I took the lump of gold, ground it into powder, and threw the powder into the stream, drew down the mountain. You also made the Lord angry when you were staying at Tabera and Masa and the key words the hab taba then at Kadeshi Banea the road said I'm giving you the land so go ahead and take it but since you didn't trust the Lord you rebelled and obeyed and disobeyed his command in fact you rebelled against the Lord for as long as you he has known you after you had made the made the idol in the shape of a calf, the Lord said he was going to destroy you. So I lay face down in front of you, the Lord for forty days and nights and prayed, Our Lord, please don't wipe out your people. You used your great power to read rescue them from Egypt and to make them your very own. Israel's ancestor Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob obeyed your faithfully. Think about them, and not about Israel's stubbornness ever and sin. If you destroy your people, the Egyptians will say, the Lord promised to give Israel land. But he wasn't powerful enough to keep his promise. In fact, he hated, that, hated them so much that he took them into the desert and killed them. But you, our Lord, chose the people of Israel to be your own. And with your mighty power, you rescued them from Egypt. Astronomy 10 the second set of commandment was said to the people. The Lord told me to chisel out of out two plastons, just like the one he had given me earlier. He also commanded me to make a wooden chest, then come up the mountain and bid with him. He told me that he would write on the new stones the same words he had written on the ones I broke, and, I, that, and that I could put these stones in this sacred chest. So I made the chest out of acacia wood, and I chiseled two flat stones like the ones I broke. Then I carried the stones up the mountain, where the Lord wrote the Ten Commandments on them, just as he had done the first time. The commandments were exactly what he had announced from the fire when you were gathered at the mountain. After the Lord returned the stones to me, I took them down the mountainside and put them in the chest. Just as he had commanded, and they are still there. Aaron died, and was said to Israel. Later, you set up camp at the wells belonging to the descendant of Jakan. Then he moved on and camped at Moshara. Then Aaron died and was buried, and his son Eliezer became the priest. Next camped at God Goda, and then the Jodbata, where there are following streams. The Levites were appointed to carry the chest. Moses said to Israel, After I put the two stones in the sacred chest, the Lord chose the tribe of Levi, not only to carry the chest, 
but also to serve as his priest at the place of worship and to bless the other tribes in his name. And they will, they still do these things. The Lord promised that he would always provide for the tribe of Levi. And that's why he won't give them any land when he divides each among the other tribes. The Lord answered the prayer of Moses. When I had taken the second set of stones up the mountain, I spent forty days and nights there, just as I had done before. Once again, the Lord answered my prayer and did not destroy you. Instead, he told me, Moses, get ready to lead the people into the land that I promised their ancestor. What the Lord wants, people of Israel, what does the Lord your God want from you? The Lord wants you to respect and follow him, to love and serve him with all your heart and soul and to obey his laws and teachings that I am giving you today. Do this and all will go well for you. Everything belongs to the Lord your God, not only the air, not only the earth and everything on it, but also the sky, the highest heavens. Yet the Lord loved your ancestors and wanted them to belong to him. So he chose them and their descendants rather than any other nation. And today you are still his people. Remember your agreement with the Lord and stop being so stubborn. The Lord your God is more powerful than other, all other gods and lords. And his tremendous power is to be feared. His decisions are always fair and you cannot bribe him to change his mind. The Lord defends the right of orphans and widows. He cares for foreigners and gives them food and clothing. And you should also care for them because you were foreigners in Egypt. Respect the Lord your God. Be faithful and serve of on you him, making promises in his name. Offer your praises to him, because you have seen him work such terrifying miracles for you. When your ancestors went to live in Egypt, there were only seventy of them, but the Lord has blessed you. And now there are more of you than there are stars in the sky. Deuteronomy 11. If you are loyal to the Lord, He will bless you. The Lord is your God, so you must always love Him and obey Him laws and teachings. Remember, He corrected you and not your children. You are the ones who saw the Lord use His great power. And he worked miracles in Egypt, making terrible things happen to the kings and all his people. And when the Egyptian army chased you in their chariots, you saw the road down, drown them and their horses in the Red Sea. Egypt still suffers from that defeat. You saw what the Lord did for you while you were in the desert, right up to the time you arrived there. And you saw how the Lord made the ground opened up in the middle of our camp underneath the tent of the Dan. And Abraham, who were swallowed up 
along with their families, their animals, and their tent. With your own eyes, you saw the Lord might power to all these things. Soon you will cross the Jordan River, and if you obey the laws and teachings I am giving you today, you will be strong enough to conquer the land that the Lord promised your ancestor and their descendant. It's rich with milk and honey, and you will live there and enjoy it for a long time. It's better land than you had in Egypt, where you had to struggle just to water your crops. But the hills and valleys in the promises land are watered by rain from heaven. Because the Lord your God keeps his eye on this land and takes care of it all year long, the Lord your God commands you to love him and to serve him with all your heart and soul. If you obey him, he will send the rain at the right seasons, so you will have more than enough food, wine, and olive oil, and there will be plenty of glass for your castle. But watch out, you will be tempted to turn your backs on the Lord. And if you worship other gods, the Lord will become angry and keep the rain from falling. Nothing will grow in your fields, and you will die and disappear from the God land that, that the Lord is giving you. Memorize these laws and thinking about them. Write down copies and tie them to your wrist and your forehead to have to obey them. Teach them to your children. Talk about them all the time. Whether you're at home or walking around the Lord or going to bed or at night or getting up in the morning. Write them on door frames, on your homes, and on your town gate. Then you and descendants will live a long in time in the land that the Lord promised your ancestors. Your families will live there as long as the skies above the earth. Love the Lord your God faithfully and obey all the laws and teaching I am giving you today. If you live the way the Lord wants, He will help you take the land. And even though the nations there are more powerful than you, the Lord will force them to live when you attack. You will capture the land everywhere you go, from the southern desert to the Lebanon mountains, and from the you protest river west to the Mediterranean Sea. No one will be able to stand up to you. The Lord will make everyone terrified of you, just as he promised. You have a choice. Do you want the Lord to bless you? Or do you want him to put a curse on you? Today I am giving you his laws, and if you obey him, he will bless you. But if you disobey him and worship those gods that have never done anything for you, the Lord will put a curse on you. After the Lord your God helps you take the land, you must have a ceremony where you announce his blessing, from Mount Gerizim and his cursed from Mount Eval. You know that these two mountains are west of the Jordan River in land now controlled by the Canaanites living in the Jordan River Valley. The mountains are 
west of the road near the sacred trees of Moray on the other side of Gilgal. Soon you will cross the Jordan River to conquer the land that the Lord your God is giving you. And when you have settled there, be careful to obey his laws and teaching that I am giving you today. Deuteronomy 12 Only one place to worship the Lord. Now I will tell you the laws and teaching that you have to obey as long as you live. Your ancestors worshiped the Lord and He is giving you this land. But the nations that live there worship other gods. So after you capture the land, you must completely destroy their places of worship on mountains and hills or in the shape of large trees. Wherever these nations worship their gods, you must tear down their altars, break their sacred stones, burn the sacred poles used in worshiping the god this Asherah, and smash their uh, idols to pieces. Destroy these places of worship so completely that no one will remember they were ever there. Don't worship the Lord your God in the way those nations worship their gods. Soon you will cross the Jordan and the Lord will help you conquer your enemies and let you live in peace. There in the land he gave, he gave, he has given you. But after you are settled, life will be different. You must not offer sacrifice just as just anywhere you want to. Instead, the Lord will choose a place somewhere in Israel, where you must go to worship Him. All of your sacrifice and offerings must be taken there including sacrifice to please the Lord and any gift you promise or voluntarily giving Him. That's where you must also take one-tenth of your grain, wine, and olive oil, as well as firstborn of your castle, sheep, and ghosts. You and your family and servants will eat your gift and sacrifices and celebrate there at the place of worship because the Lord your God has made you successful in everything you have done. And since Levites will not have any land of their own, you must ask some of them to come along and celebrate with you. Sometimes you may want to kill an animal for food and not as a sacrifice. If the Lord has blessed you and given you enough cows or sheep or goats, then you can butcher one of them where you live. You can eat it just like the meat from a deer or Dazzled, then you kill when you go hunting. And even those people who are unclean and unfit for worship can, can have some of the meat. But you must not eat the blood of any animal. Let the blood drain out on the ground. The Lord has promised that the later on he will give Israel more land and some of you may not be able to travel or, or the way from your homes to the place of worship each time you are hungry for meat but the Lord 
will give you castle, ship, and gold, and you can butcher any of those animals at home and eat as much as you want. It is the same as eating the meat from a deer or a grazel. Then you will you kill when you are hunting, and this and in this way, anyone who is unclean and unfit for worship can have some of the meat, but doesn't eat the blood. It is. The life of the animal, so let it drain out on the ground before you eat the meat. Do you want the Lord to make you successful? Do you want your children to be successful even after you're gone? Then do what pleases the God, Lord, and don't eat blood. All sacrifices and offerings to the Lord must be taken to the place where He chooses to be worshipped. If you offer a sacrifice to please the Lord, all of it meat must be burned on the altar. You can eat the meat from certain kinds of sacrifices, but you must always pour out the animal's blood on the altar. If you obey these laws, you'll be doing what the Lord your God says is right and good. Then you, then He will help you and your descendants be successful. Worship the Lord in the right way. Moses said, Israel, as you go into the land and attack the nations that are there, the Lord will get rid of them, and you can have their hand. But that, when you must be especially careful not to ask, how did those nations worship their gods? Shouldn't we worship the Lord in the same way? No, you should not. The Lord hates the this. Disgusting way those nations worship their gods, because they even burn their sons and daughters as sacrifices. Obey all the laws and teachings I am giving you. Don't add any and don't take any away. Deuteronomy 13. Don't worship other gods. Someday I prophet may come along who is able to perform miracles or tell what will happen in the future. Then the prophet may say, Let's start worshipping some new good gods, some gods that we know nothing about. If the prophet says this, don't listen. The Lord your God will be watching to find out whether or not you love Him with all your heart and soul. You must be completely faithful to the Lord, worship and obey only the Lord and do this with fear and trembling because he rescued you from slavery in Egypt. If a prophet tells you to obey the Lord your God and to stop worshiping Him, then the prophet is evil and must be put to death. Someone else may say to you, Rich worship other gods. The person may be your best friend. Your brother or sister, your son or daughter, or your own dear wife or husband. You must not listen to people who say such things. Instead, you must tone them to death. You must be the first to throw the stones, the others from the 
community will finish the job. Don't show any pity. The gods worshipped by other nations have never done anything for you or your ancestors. People who ask you to To worship other gods are trying to get you to stop worshiping the Lord who rescued you from slavery in Egypt. So put to death anyone who asks you to worship another god. And when the rest of Israel hears about it, they will be afraid. And no one else will ever do such an evil thing again. After the Lord your God gives you towns to live in, you may hear a rumor about one of the towns. You may hear that some worthless people have talked everyone there into worshiping other gods, even though These gods had never done anything for them. You must carefully find out if the rumor is true, that if, if the people of the town have actually done such a disgusting thing in your own country. You must take their sword and kill every one of them and their livestock too. Get all the possessions of the people who live there and pile them up into the marketplace without keeping anything for yourself. Set the pile and the whole town on fire and don't ever rebuild the town. The whole town will be sacrificed to the Lord your God. Then he won't be angry anymore and he will have mercy on you and make your nation stronger, just as he promised your ancestors. That's why you must do what the Lord your God say is right. I'm giving you his laws and teachings today, and you must obey them. Don't mourn like other nations. People of Israel, you are the Lord's children. So when you mourn for the dead, you must not cut yourselves or shave your forehead. Out of all the nations on this earth, the Lord your God chose you to be his own. You belong to the Lord, so don't be behave like those who worship other gods, animals that can be eaten. Don't eat any disgusting animals. You may eat the meat of cattle, sheep, and goats, wild sheep and goats, and gazelles, and delops, and all kinds of deer. It's all right to eat meat from any animal that have divided hoofs also chew the cud, but don't eat camels, rabbits, and rock badgers. These animals chew the cud, but do not have divided hooves. You must treat them as unclean, and don't eat pork, since pigs have divided hooves, but they don't chew their cud. Don't even touch a dead pig. You can eat any fish that has fins and scales, but there are other creatures that live in the water, and if they do not have fins and scales, you must not eat them. Treat them as unclean. You can eat any clean bird, but don't eat the meat of any of the following birds eagles, vultures, falcons, kites, ravens, 
ostriches, owls, seagulls, hawks, pelicans, ospreys, cormorants, turks, herons, and hoopoes. You must not eat bats. Swarming insects are clean, so don't eat them. However, you are allowed to eat certain kind of winged insects. They belong to the road your god. So if you happen to find a dead animal, don't eat its meat. You may give it to foreigners who live in your town or sell it to foreigners who are visiting your town. Don't boil a go young goat in its mother's milk. Give the Lord ten percent of your harvest. People of Israel, every year you must set aside ten percent of your grain harvest. Also set aside ten percent of your wine and olive oil and the firstborn of every cow, sheep, and goat. Take this to the place where the Lord chooses to be worshipped and eat them there. This will teach you to raise respect to the Lord your God. But suppose you can't carry that 10% of your harvest to the place where the Lord chooses to be worshipped. If you live too far away, or if the Lord gives you big harvest, then sell this part and take the money there instead. When you and your family arrive, spend the money on food for a big celebration by castle, sheep, goats, wine, beer, if they are any other kinds of food that you want to buy those too. And since people of the Levi tribe don't own any land for growing crops, remember to ask the Levi to celebrate with you. Every third day, instead of using the tent percent of your harvest for a big celebration. Bring it into town and put it in a community storehouse. The Levites have no land of their own, so you must give them food from the storehouse. You must also give you give food to the poor who live in your town including orphans, widows, and foreigners. If they have enough to eat, then the Lord your God will be pleased and make you successful in everything you do. Deuteronomy 15 Loans Every seven years you must announce. The Lord said, Loans do not need to be paid back. Then if you have loaned money to another Israelite, you can no longer ask for payment. This law applies only to loans you have made to other Israelites. Foreigners will still have to pay back when you have loaned them. No one in Israel should ever be poor. The Lord your God is giving you this land, and He has promised to make you very successful if you obey His laws and teachings that I am giving you today. You will lend money to many nations, but you ought to have to browse. You will rule many nations, but they ought to rule you. After the road your God gives land to each of you, there may be p poor Israelites in the town where you live. If there are, then don't be mean 
and selfish with your money. Instead, be kind and lend them what they need. Be careful. Don't say to yourself, "Soon it will be the seventh year, and then I won't be able to get my money back." It would be horrible for you to think that way and to be so selfish that you refuse to help the poor. They are your relatives, and if we don't help them, they may ask the Lord to decide whether you have done wrong, and He will say that you are guilty. You should be happy. To give the poor what they need, because then the Lord will make you successful in everything you do. There will always be some right to who are poor and needy. That's why I'm commanding you to be generous with them, setting slaves free. Moses said to Israel. If any of you buy Israelites as slaves, you must set them free after six years. And don't just tell them they are free to leave. Give them sheep and goats and good supply of grain and wine. The more the Lord has given you, the more you should give them. I'm commanding. You to obey the Lord as a reminder. Then you were slaves in age before He set you free. But one of your slaves may say, "I love you and your family, and I will be better off staying with you." So please don't make me leave. Take the slave to the door of your house, and push a sharp metal rod. Drew one ear love and into the door. Such slaves will belong to you for life, whether they are man or woman. Don't complain when you have to set a slave free. After all, you got a six years of service at half the cost of hiring someone to do the work. First born animals. If the firstborn animals of cow or sheep or goat is a male, it must be given to the Lord. Don't put firstborn cattle to work or cut all from firstborn sheep. Instead, each year you must take the firstborn of this animal to the place where the Lord your God chooses. To be worshipped, you and your family will sacrifice them to the Lord, and then eat them as part of the sacred meal. But if the animal is lame, or blind, or has something else wrong with it, you must not sacrifice it to the Lord your God. You can butcher it where you live and eat it just like the meat of deer or grizzly that you kill while hunting. Even those people who are unclean and unfit for worship can have some, but you must never eat the blood of an animal. Let it drain out on the ground.